So it's that time of the week again. It's Sunday morning and time for the regular Wardy's Waffle. Hope you're all having a decent week. Those of you who are combining winter barley and all seed rape, for once we've actually had some hot days. We've been up to 32 degrees uh, on, uh, on Saturday uh, and Friday yesterday. So we've had some good weather. We aren't harvesting yet, but we've been taking rape into store. That's what we're going to be looking at in this update. That's not from this year's crop though. I think that will start next week. That's from farms who've had some left over from last harvest. So what have we got in this week for you? We're looking at the storage of rape and how we do that. Uh, we're going to go into that a bit more detail in the midweek update. We have also been finishing off planting some more of our winter bird food plots for one of the contract farms we do. So we look at, look at that and I'm just going to touch on that again uh, in a minute. We have also got a detailed update on our Capulet beans because we're actually spraying some of the uh, two fields. We're spraying the, the beans and the weeds off and actually keeping the black oats, the companion crop. We'll look at that and the reason why we're growing the companion crop alongside these Capulet beans that will turn into, into baked beans. Um, and also um, we're looking at one or two bits around the farm, other crops around the farm. And also at the end, we've just started to get the mole uh, drainer ready, the mole plow uh, on the RX and Tom's looking at that. And so we'll have a full update on the moling and how that will help the drainage. And I'm going to give lots of explanation about that, about the benefit that will give in next Sunday's update. Just before we get into what we're doing this week, and I'll just uh, go into it, and I just wanted to just have a quick word about these winter bird food plots. We've got one of us behind, uh, one of them behind me, me here, and I posted a video on uh, on Twitter a day or two ago of, uh, of Tom putting in one of the plots and um, uh, looking at the nitrogen that we put with it, because we put some nitrogen with it, because I think these fields and these crops need treating properly like a sort of a cereal or cash crop because you get the most out of them that way. And I've had a bit of criticism from people saying that um, we shouldn't be putting nitrogen on these plots and the power involved in establishing them. But I really do think that we should be looking at these crops the same as a normal normal cash crop, whether it's wheat or sugar beet or barley or seed rape or whatever it is. Because the more you put into these stewardship areas and the environmental crops, the more benefit they'll bring to wildlife and the environment. And, and I, I think that's why we're doing it. And we've been doing these now since 2000. 2005 is our stewardship agreement that's when it uh, that's when we entered into it and i think also the sfi um crops that's going in these legume mixes they need to be put in properly and i can actually see uh, if we're not careful a lot of good land is actually going to be growing a lot of weeds because we've got one or two areas of black grass and wild oats in our areas we've got one just below the hill here you can see these purpley uh, sort of whitish purpley fields and that's the fields that we didn't get planted with wheat and um, those are the areas that uh, tom is going to be moling uh, in the next day or so and that areas are, are where we've had this cover crop in uh, uh, vetch, phacelia, uh, sorry, phacelia, um, uh, buckwheat and linseed. And we've had those in to help dry the soil out and, uh, and make them uh, better, if you like, because of the uh, greenness that's going back into them with the cover crop. We're going to be getting those fields ready for planting with winter wheat before we start harvest. That's the aim of them and maximise next year's winter wheat. But I think if we're not careful that all these SFI mixes, when they finally come out of SFI, if it's a three year agreement, they're going to be full of weeds and, uh, and they're going to be just a mess. So I think it needs to be, we need to be very careful that all this land going into these agreements is actually managed properly, topped if there's weeds there. Uh, and, and actually manage so that when the agreement finishes and if you want to bring them back into food production they actually are, come out of the SFI crop as in the same condition that the fields went in. I think it's really important we need to look at the condition of these crops and don't just put them in and forget about them. I think they need managing and that's I think what some people might be forgetting. They're looking at, at, at £570 a hectare for the legume mix but when you look at the seed and you look at managing that, the actual return to the farmer is probably going to be no more than £350 a hectare, probably at the most with all the management that's needed. But uh, anyway, that's just my view on it. But uh, I just thought I'd just highlight what we're doing and just give my thoughts on some of these mixes and these crops. We can see where we stood here. Fantastic viewpoint just up here. Top of uh, Ledham Hillside. That's the Trent Valley down there. And in the very, very distance, it's a bit cloudy at the minute, but are the Derbyshire Pennines. But great, great viewpoint here. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. Let's crack on um, with this update. 
you can see we've got uh, Frankie here. There's, no, she hasn't been wearing my glasses. And Nala here, they've just had a run out as well. So let's crack on with this update. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you at the end. It's Friday morning. Tom's just filled up with fuel. He's going out with the Alita just to finish off putting the winter bird food plots on one of the contract farms. I'm coming out with the fast track with the coon spreader on the back, the uh, uh, pneumatic spreader. I'm going to put some slug pallets on the stewardship areas that we've drilled a week ago because they're now seen now up in rows. We're just now on one of the environmental stewardship areas that's come in a winter bird food plot and it was very rough when it was soloed so we've got the coulter press out and it's doing a really good job. Cracking machine this with the spring loaded tines. Leveling it up, it's very wet underneath still. Look at that lump there. But the outsides are particularly rough here. It's leveling it up well, but it has weathered awfully. Huge amounts. This heavy soils when it dries and bakes out solid and you get rain on it. Like I've said before, when you look at that, it just crumbles. We haven't got a tine in the very outside there, you can see. It just boils lumps out sometimes, so we put it in and out, depends on the conditions. Well, that's done a superb job there. Only slight drawback today, it's about 27 or 8 degrees and the air conditioning isn't working on the uh, on the Puma, so not the best, a bit hot in there for Reuben. I've come down to the Capulet beans, Reuben's spraying these at the minute, we're spraying the black oats off, and there are some beans here, but they're not that brilliant, but we'll just have a look and just show you so we're spraying off you can see the boom sections there working this section this side will switch off in a minute automatically all oh, that's the gps there we go so the oats all these black oats are sort of a cover crop companion crop really so we've got the beans in the bottom of them here growing and they are getting some light, so they're better than I thought. But there is not that many of them. And there are a few broadleaf weeds as well. But the beans looking quite healthy, what we have got. And the other problem we've got here, well not problem because it will be dealt with now, but these wild oats, which those are, these will be... Um, controlled this will be controlled in here because the spray we're putting on will actually deal with the wild oats and the black oats so those new viewers of the channel those who missed it earlier in the season the reason why we've got oats with the beans growing as a companion crop is because these beans grow really low to the ground and some of the pods are on the floor and we had a little trial last year where we grew in in rows Obviously, these have been broadcast with our with our spreader, and then we've caught, incorporated them when we've drilled the beans. But with the sugar beet drill that we had last year, putting the black oats at the side of the beans, it drew the beans up, um, and it helped them stand a bit better because they were made them a bit taller. But also at harvest time, there was a bit more volume going through the combine because when these beans die off, and especially these because they're very thin. When they die off, there won't be a lot of volume going into the combine and it doesn't feed very well. And so the black oats actually did help the combine to feed better. The black oats obviously will uh, will be dead. There'll be no seed uh, in these. So it will just be the stems and the straw going up into the combine. But the reason we've had got such poor germination is because, um, is because we had 27 millimetres of rain the day after planting these beans. There is a small area being grown across at Reevesby, uh, the other side of um, Tattershall as well, or near Tattershall, there's some being grown there as well, a very, very small area, and another one of Agri's trial farms. But um, so we need to get every bit of beans we can get from here uh, to try and so we've got some more seed for, uh, for next year.
I've just come to one of our other fields of beans and this is where the sugar beet drill put them in but we had really really poor emergence and I think it was because um, of the rain straight after drilling and because the sugar beet drill doesn't move so much seed uh, sorry so much soil it just puts the seed in a little groove in the soil and I think the problem is um, it was quite consolidated around that zone and so when we had 27 millimeters of rain it sat around the seed and the seed rotted whereas the field just over here that we've just been in this one um, that was drilled with our Simba drill we worked it deeper and I think the water was able to drain away from the bean seed and that's why we've got a sort of a, a, a semi-successful establishment there but we've got virtually nothing here so we're actually now going to be spraying off whatever beans came in here there are some broadleaf weeds there's some charlock and various weeds here we're going to be spraying all this off with the graminicide and keeping the oats so that we'll actually have something to harvest here and then we'll be able to have our own um, companion crops and cover crop seed uh, next year you can see the rows from the sugar beet drill there whereas whereas the field just through there was broadcast and yeah this area is not not brilliant through here the yellow flowered um plants here they're not it's not oilseed rape it's charlock which is a real problem weed and when you look obviously the black oats here aren't as thick because they're in rows um but we've got to kill all these weeds off so that we've actually got to, so that when we harvest this we harvest the black oats and, uh, and no weeds as well now come into our other field of capulet beans and this is probably the best one we have uh, at the minute and we're spraying these these oats off as well and when you look there are probably more beans here than uh, than anywhere um a few there's a wild oat uh, just poking up there but generally they're looking well but the, the oats are looking well as, as well uh, they if anything these oats are thicker than the other field so you can see there what the oats are like shows how good a system we got into um, broadcasting it with the pneumatic spreader and then uh, just on top then incorporating them with the uh, drill when we drilled the beans there are the beans you can see growing in the bottom but you can see they are being shaded out by the oats more there more there um, so the nutrients and the light and the light is going to the oats rather than the beans but because of this, the beans are coming up. I'm actually quite pleased with these. They're a bit better than what I thought they were going to be. See, they are reaching up to the light when you look at them. But these black oats, they're up to my waist, so they are really, really high. So, very clever chemistry here, because obviously this, the chemical we're putting on controls grass weeds and crops like this, but it won't control legumes such as the beans. So just to finish this update on these uh, on these beans, a week ago when I was at Warwick University, Eric showed me the the beans that they'd grown, and they planted them in a lot different conditions to these, but the soil type was a lot different. This is really difficult clay soils with a lot of clay and a lot of silt in, whereas the soil at Warwick University was a lot kinder, a lot sandier. And uh, and this is a little update I've got from Warwick University when I was there a week ago. You can just see how good the, how good those beans are. Just come to the college trial area where the beans are growing. So this is Godiva, which is the blonde type of bean, a bigger bean than the Capulet. Looking really well here, but you can see the soil, fantastic soil, perfect for this job. Just look at that. Looking really well. Well, that white peg is there. And that is Olivia, which is the black bean. You just see they are growing more upright. They are growing definitely a bit taller. And when you look at them here, So that's, there's four beds of one of the new varieties. One, two, three, four. And then, is that one bed of another? Yeah, you can see the difference, that last variety. But we won't say the name because they're not registered or anything yet. So Eric, just looking at these different varieties there, what's the sort of benefits or the difference between the ones we're growing? Well, the new varieties, they're all white bean varieties. They're yep. gonna be a larger bean, the size of a cannellini, a slightly larger. Yeah. And the plants themselves, they are gonna be slightly taller, a bit more rigid stem. And a bit better clearance off the ground. So the pods won't be so low to the floor. Yeah. 
So we're, we're building up the seed so we have yep. enough to send off for registration. Yep. It'll be, it'll be two years before we'll have a sample that you would trial on your farm. Real. So Tom's putting in this um, winter bird food mix. Still wet underneath, I think, looking at the soil of what's coming up. You can see there the seed coming out of those tubes and it's dropping in the soil, in the groove that the legs made. And then the, the fertilizer is also going in the same groove right above the seed. And then we follow the roll at the back to roll and firm it. It's doing a good job. So you can see the legs bring moisture up. That's where a leg's been, that's where a leg's been. So that's why it works really well, because the seed is going exactly where the legs has been. You can see the legs on it there, and you see it's sticky because they've still got a lot of soil stuck to them. So just putting some more liquid nitrogen in to the tank because we run out. We're putting the equivalent of 80 kilos a hectare on, but that's just actually in the row. So in between the rows, we're not getting anything at all. So Tom, what, what are you putting in? Uh, it's a bit of a blend, a lot of things. Yeah. There's uh, triticale, linseed, there's a sorghum blend, rye, millet, quinoa, perennial rye, stall turnips, fennel, cecilia, and some chicory. And the seed rate you're going on at? Uh, 20 kilos hectare. Right, and calibration of the unit, is it coming working out all right? Seems to be. We've uh, put two bags in, drilled hectare, yeah. so I had a bit left in, so it's close, close enough. Close enough, so. And so what speed are you managing to go with this? Because it looks like it's taking some pulling. About 560k uh, in this stuff, but obviously in the wet a bit, heavy a bit, it's um, taking a bit more. Taking a bit, yeah, yeah. How many legs are there? 11. 11 legs. They say they're low draft, but they're. Um, <laughs> Some and you can see when you look here at that, that's a telltale sign, isn't it? The fact there's a lot of soil stuck on the outside. Not shiny. No, not shiny at all. So, great. And then what we're doing, going to press them afterwards. Yeah. Just going to run the press over the slight different angle. Just to cover it. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. Great. Thanks, Tom. Friday afternoon, last load this week. This is only a part load coming from a farm that they're cleaning up from last harvest rate. Going to tip it in that corner. Got some more pedestals put in. We'll have a proper look at this storage and uh, what we're doing in the Weybridge. Tom will explain what he does next week. Just gets a bit more awkward in the doorway, but beauty of having high doors. Nice, clean, tidy lorry. Tom's just put the mole on for the first time, so we're going to start that. Which will be interesting in the next day or two. Just getting the spreader ready uh, for the slug pallets and calibrating them. And we now use slugs, so there's a bit of oil dripped on this bag. But slugs pellets is what we use, which we're, we're the only ones we're allowed to use. And this is um, ferric phosphate, whereas the other ones were metaldehyde that they were banned. So it's slugs we use now. We're putting these on at three kilograms a hectare. So I've emptied these into a bucket, and these are the pellets what we're using. Moment of truth. Tom and Ruben has just got to try, try and get set up with that. Just got to the field that we're going to put the slug pellets on, and this is the one from the top of the hillside that you saw me do the clip a minute to go from the bottom. You can just see which our fields are with the uh, with the white purpley flowers. This here, this stewardship here, this winter bird food has come fantastically well. It was put in only about a week last Wednesday, so it's been in the ground about ten days. But I'll just show you, you can just see the rows actually here, how well it's uh, germinated. You can see the rows down the field here, looking really good. But I've already seen some flea beetle activity and slugs. Now, because a lot of this is sort of a Cayley type mix, there's legumes in here. The flea beetle, you can just see the yellow mottling on the leaves there. Flea beetle got that already. 
and the rows up here aren't quite so evident. You can just see up there they are, but where I am here, and it's because the slugs have been at them, so I'm glad I've come here with the pellets. And then looking here, this is the damage the slug's done, eaten a lot of those leaves away there. And lo and behold, there we have flea beetle. Two of them. So this is the spreader. Um, I'm just going to turn these deflectors all the way up. You can uh, spread, have them up this way and it spreads it out further. So when I was putting the seed on with this, on the cover crop seed, I actually had these up so that it spreads a bit further. But with slug pellets, I don't want them to go in the hedge bottom or places where they shouldn't do. So I'm going to turn them around. It's really easy. Just undo two clips at the bottom, do that, put them on the top there like that. And then it just means the slug pellets are more go down to the ground. Whereas when they're here, they'll go up in the air before they hit the ground. So I'm just going to change that. Everyone, it'll only take me three or four minutes to do them all. That's it. That's got them all done. So there's only about two hectares here. So we'll just get on and get this, get these uh, pellets on here and get it done. So just to finish off this Sunday update, I'm stood in one of our fields that we didn't get uh, planted with a, with a crop this year, but this is a cover crop because uh, we needed the moisture soaking up out of the soil because the soils are so wet. These were planted around about the uh, middle of May, maybe 10th of May. You can see the land wheel on the side here. This is what drives the meter wheel there, that drives the hopper. You see it is moving about a little bit, but it's on rubber dampers. So it's on rubber dampers at the bottom. So those little outlets at the bottom of that green tube is where the seed's coming out. You can't really see it from here. Then the harrows, the red spring tines, are just raking it in and covering the seed. And we've got some uh, phacelia, some buckwheat and some linseed in here. What you can see now, the purpley flowers now, are the, is the phacelia. And that's what the bees absolutely love. And the whiter, yellowy flowers, they are, um, that's the buckwheat. But this is really putting goodness into the soil and putting some nutrients back into the soil and drawing some moisture out because we need to be cultivating these in the next, uh, next few days. We're going to be going on um, with the mole plough, starting that in a couple of days. So when you look here, just a mass of flowers and foliage. And let's just see if I can pull one up. Look at that for a plant of phacelia. Look at the roots there, just soaking moisture up. And when this all goes back into the soil, just helping the nutrients and organic matter. So that's it for this Sunday update. Thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please come back with any questions. Thank you for all your all comments and questions. I do enjoy those answering them and seeing what you have to say. So uh, anything you want to see around the farm, if you want to have another look around the buildings, around the yard, uh, I did do that when I started to do YouTube videos two and a half years ago. But if you want to have a look around any of the infrastructure of the farm, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you midweek.